Hello everybody and welcome to some game that I don't know what it is. I'm recording the voice part beforehand so I can focus on the words instead of the game. The game is just there for the visuals. If I didn't have an aversion to showing my face on the internet, my ugly mug and shittacular beard would be breaking your screen right now. I'm a small YouTube channel. I don't make very many videos, and a lot of what I do make gets trashed before it ever gets uploaded. I've actually tried to make this video twice before, but I couldn't keep focused on the words. I have 556 subs, and my last video got 68 total views in 10 days. My largest video ever has made 24,000 views total. Thanks to things like Adblock, my ad views are microscopic. Basically, I don't make money off of YouTube. Most of what I'm about to say doesn't affect me at all. Why am I even bothering to say it? Because that what's happening now is an injustice. Not only that, but it's a stupid injustice. And there's nothing that pisses me off more than stupid injustice. I'm sure by now you've heard about the new content ID system. Nerd Cube just talked about it, Total Biscuit has talked about it, Kurt J. Mack has even talked about it. Basically, what happened is Google decided to change how their networks worked. There are now two types of members in these networks, managed channels and affiliates. Managed channels don't have to deal with the new content ID system, only affiliates. However, the networks take legal responsibility for managed channels, so very few people will ever be managed. After the new system took hold, the affiliates started getting slammed with claims against their videos. A large chunk of them were false claims. But wait, why do I keep saying new content ID system? It's the same old system. It's just more people are getting hit by it now, right? Wrong. Valve was never claiming videos before. Now the content ID system is claiming the videos on Valve's behalf. And Valve isn't the only company to come out and say that they aren't claiming videos. Something changed in the content ID system to cause it to start fl flagging everything instead of just the stuff marked to be flagged. Why did Valve even bother to put their stuff into the content ID system if they were never going to claim anything? Well, the content ID system is fundamentally flawed, and I'll get to that in a moment. It's ripe for abuse. Valve is forced to upload their content to the content ID system just so that no one else can upload it and claim it. They can whitelist it, mark it as theirs, and say people can use it, but that seems to no longer be working. Yes, the claims can be disputed, as long as you know that they can, but any advertising revenue that may have been gained during the dispute is lost. That money isn't held somewhere and then goes to the winner of the dispute, it goes to the people that made the dispute and never comes back. So for potentially up to a month, revenue is lost. Now think about Nerd Cubed, whose job it is to make videos on YouTube. This is how he lives. He's already estimated he lost hundreds of dollars thanks to the new system. On top of that, this is a slow time for views. A really rough time to lose hundreds of dollars. But I should start at the beginning. I know, this is far, this far into the rant, and now I'm starting at the beginning? What the hell? It all began several years ago, ago, when the US government tried to update copyright laws to match the new digital age. We have the internet now. Shit fucking changed. What we got was the DMCA, the Digital Millennium Copyright Act. A law that did nothing to change copyright to match the digital age, but did everything to change the digital age to match the archaic law. One of the things that was in the DMCA, DMCA, and probably the only good thing to come out of it, was something called safe harbors. Basically, what it tries to do is take the blame for copyright infringement off of third parties. For example, if I upload the new Iron Man movie to YouTube, I'm liable, not YouTube. However, to qualify for safe harbors, the third party has to jump through a few hoops. One of these hoops is the DMCA takedown request. YouTube would be required to take down the Iron Man movie as soon as the copyright owner informed them that it was there. Note that I didn't mention anything about a trial, didn't say anything about proof, didn't say anything about a government employee, like cops or anything, or a judge, or a jury, or anything. The copyright owner sends the takedown request directly to the third party, and the third party is required to take it down. That's all well and good in my hypothetical situation. I clearly do not own the copyright to Iron Man. But what if YouTube get a, gets a claim against, say, this video? 
The words are mine. I thought them up. Copyright law automatically applies, and I get a copyright on this very rant. I have a license to play the games as well. So if YouTube got a takedown request on this video, it's a bogus takedown request. So what do they do? They can fight it. They can say that they won't take down the video, but then they lose their safe harbor for the video. If the video is later determined to be infringing, YouTube is liable and may, may, must pay fines up to $150,000 per instance. If this video gets 30 views, that's 30 instances. If the video is determined not to be infringing, then what? Well, they could be charged with... The, 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 the company that filed the claim could be charged with perjury but it would have to be proven that they intentionally filed a false claim. Oops, we made a mistake and filed this to the wrong video. Seems to be a good enough reason to get out of that. What benefits are there to YouTube if they, get to, if they do fight it, if they do take the risk? They get to put the video back up that got 30 views and not a damn cent in profit. So where's the motivation to do anything outside of take the video down? The DMCA is fundamentally flawed in that way. There's no real punishment for filing false takedown claims, and as is with anything that's that flawed, the scammers came out of the woodwork. People started filing for commentary that they didn't like. They filed for commercials from their competitors. They filed just for the hell of it sometimes. And they filed to get advertising revenue. But that, that's later. YouTube tried. They tried to do what's right for their users, the people that actually earned them money. But back then, there was something like four hours of video being uploaded every second. The, the videos equaled more, more videos equaled more takedown requests. How are they ever going to properly go through all of those takedowns? Some legitimate, some not. So they invented the content ID system. The ID, the idea was that the copyright owner can upload their content and the system will automatically look for infringing videos. This was above and beyond what the law required, and a court of law has determined that already. But it's probably the only way YouTube can still exist. I mean, think about it. They get all these takedown notices. They, for somebody to go through them manually, you would have to have people actually there. You would have to pay people to do, be there and do that. They would have to pay far too much. YouTube would be dead by now. So when somebody uploaded their content to the content ID system, they would choose what happened. The video could be taken down, the ad review could be redirected into the copyright owner's account, it could simply add attribution to the video, or straight up do nothing. The last one was for people like Valve, who want to let people use their content, but doesn't want somebody else to claim it. This wasn't good enough for some people. The content ID system is a machine, and it can be fooled. Google had to magically figure out what was infringing and take it down instantly, even though the original copyright owner couldn't do that. I believe that Viacom is still trying to Google, sue Google over this. This is how we know the content IC system above and it, it is above and beyond what is required by the law. Google won twice already against Viacom. Viacom's still pushing this. You know why lawyers have a bad rap? It's because the chaotic evil lawyers know how to twist the law around and use it to say the exact opposite of what it's supposed to say. The lawful good lawyers also know how to do that and use that knowledge to protect against the chaotic evil. But once you've spent years thinking that way, that's how your mind starts to work. How can this system be misrepresented to look illegal, and how do we protect against that? Thus, the gradual ramping up of the content ID system. Doesn't help that everyone and their brother seems to be targeting Google for one reason or another. They're kind of this year's evil that everybody needs to rally against. It's cool to be hating on Google. So yeah, they're, they're a target and they're starting to think like a target. That's called something. Um, Post-traumatic stress disorder? No. Uh, oh, I forget. 
But the Content IC system has to deal with all of the copyright owners and all of their different wishes. It has to deal with the people that mistakenly claim content, it has to deal with the scammers that abuse the system, it has to deal with the potential legitimate responses to those who have gotten the claims against them. It's just a machine. It was doomed to fail from the start. It was doomed to fail before it was even invented. We are all children of the digital age. Even those born without computers have been changed by them. We cannot go back. Human nature does not work that way. The DMCA, trying to change people today to match laws that were created hundreds of years ago, hundreds of years before they were born, will not work. And as everyone who works with higher level math or anyone who programs will tell you, compounding errors is a very bad thing. If your initial data is off, the output will be even more off. The Content ID system was built upon ideas that were built upon the DMCA. The Content ID system can't help but be flawed. Do I have an answer for all this? No. If I did, I'd be on Capitol Hill. Hell, the people on Capitol Hill have no idea what to do with this. If they did, we wouldn't have the DMCA to begin with. All I can do is explain the situation, vent my frustration, and hope that somebody smarter than me can figure it all out. Oh, and to all of those small YouTubers out there that don't have to deal with this because they're partnered directly with YouTube, the new system is coming to all of us January 1st. So keep your eyes on your copyright notices. It's hidden on the left side of the video manager since they don't seem to be emailing us anymore. Well, it appears there's a little bit of time left on my video here. It took me a little longer to finish this map than I expected it would, but I had fun doing it. I don't want to interrupt it in the middle of the map. But I do want to say before I go that I picked Portal 2 for the reason that it is one of the videos that have got claims against them for no apparent reason. Uh, Nerdcubed was saying that they got a, he got a claim on one of his father and son videos when they played Portal 2 multiplayer, specifically the intro sequence. Now, I wanted to do the intro sequence, but I couldn't couldn't think of anybody who was playing Portal 2 at the time to play with. And I kind of don't want to ruin it for anybody who hasn't played it before, because there are actually parts of Portal 2 multiplayer that you'll never see again once you beat it. And if you're playing with somebody who's already beat it, you will never see it for the first time. But, you know, I just wanted to get the rant off my chest, and I did want to point out that I am playing Portal 2 for a reason. And I'm just going to let this map play out. So while it does its thing, enjoy some nice calming music. And as always, keep playing the game and have fun. <laughs>